Hey everybody, it's Trish Lutz with Special Olympics Missouri, the Vice President of Programs, and I'm here to bring you another Lead at Home class for Special Olympics, and it's called Teamwork and Problem Solving. So let me share my screen with you so you can enjoy the PowerPoint. All right. So what is teamwork? Teamwork is when people work together, people to understand others, build friendly relationships, and to get any job done the right way. All team members are given a job to do, and in teamwork, all work is shared. So what is team? So you can use the word team and break it up to give you another meaning of what it means to be a team, and that is together everyone achieves more. So what I'd like to do right now is show you a quick video to demonstrate teamwork. Um, and I will do that here in a sec. So this is teamwork. Everyone is doing his own job. No one is interfering in the other person's work. So we're going to watch it again in slow motion. So follow this rule and don't interfere in others' jobs and do your work perfectly and together everyone achieves more. So with that, we'll go back to our PowerPoint. So what you saw in that video, um, hold on, we're still not there. There we go. All right, you should see it now. So what you saw in that video was um, a team, a group of people working together for a common goal, which was to get that race car driver back out onto the track. What you will remember is there were seven people in that video and they each had one specific role. So if you noticed on changing the tires, there was actually three people that were responsible for getting that tire off and getting the new tire back on. Um, there's no way that that driver could get back out on the track without his whole entire team being there. If one person was missing from that team, then they wouldn't be successful. So teamwork is, is very important in what we do and we do it every single day. Every single day you're doing some form of teamwork, whether it's when you're practicing with your sports team, it could be at church, it could be at home with your family, it could be at work. So you're always constantly doing teamwork. It's very important. So a lot of times things that go hand, teamwork and problem solving go hand in hand. So we're gonna talk about problem solving now. And there are five steps to problem solving. You wanna identify or define the problem, search or gather potential solutions, determine which solution is best, implement or put into action that solution and evaluate the solution or make changes as necessary. So this slide is gonna show you a little bit more of a pictorial or a picture of what the process looks like. So up at the right corner there where the number one is, you'll see where that's the first step and that is to identify the problem. 
The second step would be to develop alternatives. The third step would be to select the best alternative. The fourth step would be to put that into action. And the fifth step would be to evaluate it to see if it works. So an example of a problem we might think about is a group of friends are getting together and you guys have done this um, and you guys want to play, you want to play games and you've got a group of six friends who you want to play some games. You've got different board games to choose from. So the problem is, is that you can't decide on which game. Nobody can come to a compromise on the game that they all want to play. So how can you solve this problem? So again, the problem is we need to figure out what game we're going to at least play first. You might be able to play multiple games. But what are we going to do first together as a group? So you might develop alternatives. You might think of brainstorm and think about solutions to that. So what games could you play? You've got six people. So if you have six people, you probably couldn't play Scrabble because you can only play Scrabble with four people. So you have to think of games that would involve six people. So are there card games you can play like Uno? Could you um, play charades maybe? Could you uh, do play Pictionary or maybe play dominoes? Because those are all games you could do with six people. So then you might, you'll have to sit down as a group and then determine which one, what's the best alternative. So maybe you have to vote on that. Maybe you do a voting system and everyone raises their hand and you say, who wants to play Uno? And whoever raised their hand, you keep track and the majority would win. So the most people that said that they wanted to play that game, then you would be in agreement that everybody would play that game. So then you would implement that. So then you'd all sit down and you'd actually play the game. And, you know, maybe you might have to compromise and do that. So maybe one person really didn't want to play Uno, but they, you compromise by saying, okay, well, let's play Uno now, and maybe their game they wanted to play was charades. So then you could um, say, well, why don't we play Uno now, and we'll play charades next. So now you've Im implemented um, your solution, and so then you kind of sit back and you think about it, you know, all your friends go home, and you're thinking, how did that work? Did that really work how, I, how we solved that problem or is there something else that we could have done? And maybe the solution would be is that you just simply said, hey, do you guys want to come over and play Uno? And you never really gave them another option of something to do. So those are the five steps of problem solving. Um, so now we're going to break down each one of those, um, those steps and identifying the problem. And that really is defining the problem again and establishing a goal. So you're going to establish a goal of what you're going to achieve in the end by solving this problem. So the process for identifying it is to be specific about the problem and put it into words, communicate with each other, and be open to everyone's thoughts. It's very important that everybody has a voice. Just like when we have our athlete input councils, we want every single athlete to feel like they can have a voice and be heard and everyone's opinion matters. Write a statement or definition of a problem you're wanting to solve. So sometimes when you're going through the problem solving process, you might need to actually write it down so you can remember and go back to it and use it as a reference. So the second step is to brainstorm ideas or develop alternatives. So make a list of possible solutions. So in a, when you're brainstorming, anything goes. You can no idea is bad, no idea is good, it's just everything goes. Think out of the box, be creative, and you just throw ideas out there. Um, you might have to research the problem and possible solutions. So depending on what the problem is, you might need to do a little research and see maybe why that that problem is occurring and get a little background information on it. Listen, again, listen to each member of the team that is trying to solve the problem. Everybody should have a voice, everybody matters. Um, make a list of these ideas. So as you're writing them down, make, you know, as you're going through and throwing these ideas out, make sure you're writing them down so you don't forget. And as a team, determine your top choices for your solutions. So this is when problem solving, you're trying to solve a problem, but you're problem solving within a problem. So in this case, you're going to have to narrow down the solutions because you've probably come up with, you know, 20, 25 good, good ideas. So now you've got to pick the one that you're going to implement. So as a team, you have to come to that consensus and kind of in the same way that we talked about earlier, when you're trying to decide what game to play at game night with your friends, we could use the same concept here. Maybe everybody could vote on what ones they want and the top ones would 
would be your choices that you would move forward to implement. So when you're working on your solution, um, uh, to decide on the solution, the alternative, you really want to make sure that the ideal solution is smart um, and using a smart goal uh, concept, which I also taught a smart goal class that you can watch. Um, so a smart goal is specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So when you're thinking about a solution, does it fall within all of those things? Is it possible to make all of those those things happen within your solution. So when you decide on a solution, you want to, in the process of deciding the solution, you want to discuss and compromise among the team members to develop the final solution that will be put into practice and make sure it's smart. So this goes back to what we talked about earlier, where you're going to have to sit and compromise and determine which one of those solutions that you came up with is going to be the right solution for this particular problem. Now you're going to implement it. You're going to make it happen. You're going to put it into action. And the implementation of the solution requires planning and execution. So you have to plan, you have to think about it, and then you have to put it into action. It's often not perfect the first time. So you just have to remember that and it's okay. Um, it takes time to get feedback and uh, to do the evaluation of it. So the process of implementation or putting the solution into action is communicate and discuss the best way to implement the solution. So again, you're working together as a team and you're talking about it and you're communicating. Communication is one of the key things it, for any team to really be effective. So it's very important that you have open, honest communication when you're working with your team. Write down your final decision you made as a team. Then you're gonna evaluate that solution. So did it work? Um, if the answer is yes, then yeah, party, let's have a celebration. It's, we were successful, we solved that problem, and now it's probably time to move on to another one that we can solve. Um, if it didn't work, then you might have to go back to step two where you did all that brainstorming, you came up with some really great ideas, and you might have to go to option number two that you thought would be a great, good choice, and then try and implement that again. But remember, it doesn't, problem solving doesn't always work the first time. Sometimes you have to go back to the drawing board and really that's okay. But the point is, if you work together as a team and you communicate, you can, and use SMART goals, you can solve problems. So again, my name is Trish Lutz. I'm the Vice President of Programs for Special Olympics Missouri. And my contact information is here on the screen at lutz at somo.org. But I'd like to end uh, this presentation with uh, a final video that brings teamwork and problem solving together. So I hope you enjoy, and here we go. Sometimes technology gets the best of me. Oh, <laughs> 
so I love those videos. I think they're really fun and they really demonstrate teamwork kind of in a fun way. I especially like the Mingan video and that's a shout out to my good friend Gary Breimer who worked for Special Olympics for years and retired from Special Olympics and he is a huge Mingan fan. So thank you all for watching and I hope that this will help you be able to solve problems and use teamwork to do it. Have a great day.